So yeah, I know that I don't look like perfect, but that's just fine. We're just gonna roll with it. I've had a bit of a rough night. Yeah, I just wanna talk about how like your positivity is a privilege because like, you know, some people find me quite negative or the things I say quite negative, but for me, like, I'm just being honest and as an autistic person, it's really difficult for me to not be honest and not be direct and all these things. Um, and life is hard, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Let's get one thing straight. <laughs> There's this test called the ACER test where you can see, like if you've had a rough upbringing, you're more likely to develop health conditions um, because the stress impacts your body so much. And as you know, I have quite a few health conditions and I have chronic illness and pain most days. And like, I have to manage my mental health and that is like, I'm doing it really well, but it's fucking hard work. You know, I've had some people kind of say that I'm like too negative or infer that what I say is negative or that, you know, and, and, and it is complicated because of course, like you, you're not required to listen to me. You're not required to like have to endure any negativity from me necessarily, but that's your job to say to me in advance, if you don't, want me to say anything that could be framed as negative and or say you're having a really difficult time and you're just like that yeah like I just can't handle handle stuff I is it all right if we could just stick to like positive cliche you know nice good stuff and I could take that in and and decide for myself if I'm comfortable and I'm, I'm willing to do that you know I think that would be a much better way around because yeah because that's your problem and you know but at the same time, like people should have the ability to decide what they talk about and decide the kind of conversations they have. But again, the onus is on you to say that you're just not prepared for any negativity. Um, and then it's for me to decide if I'm comfortable with that and, and pretending and just kind of forcing myself to, to be la la la. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm great. Everything's great. Everything's great. You know, and there's also something to be said for appreciating things and being grateful for things. And, you know, I make time to actively do that. And I do think it's healthy for me to do that. But simultaneously, it is a privilege to be oppressively positive, you know, even though that sucks. Or it's a privilege to be positive all the time or feel like you've had a good enough life for you to be able to be positive a lot of the time or all the time. Yeah, if you've had a great upbringing, if you've had like great friends and great colleagues and, you know, life is hard for you as well. But, you know, like say you don't have an urge to like talk about how difficult things are for you. I think that is a privilege. And for me, the only way I've survived <laughs> is by talking about stuff. That's how that's how I get through things. Right. And if I'm denied that, if I'm not allowed to ever share my pain then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it <laughs> even on just like a biological sense I'm gonna keep up all this pain and then I'm gonna get really seriously ill and then die <laughs> so so yeah there's quite a lot of reasons why I share my pain and lots of people identify with it and lots of people feel seen by it and it makes them feel more alive and it makes them feel better and it makes me feel better and so you know there's a lot of applications of sharing pain and, and joy and I think yeah it's important and that's why I put content notes on things so you can have a choice about what you consume and what you do and so everyone feels consensual and great I hope that explains some of my art and my videos and what I talk about it's so hard for me not to be honest it's so hard for me not to be direct it's so hard for me to just keep everything inside and also, to be honest, like, if you give a shit about me, <laughs> like, why wouldn't you be interested? I mean, again, like, fair enough if you just can't handle it uh, and you don't, you can't, you can't deal with it. Like, fair, fair enough. We don't have to talk about stuff. At the same time, like, if my friends are suffering, I'm, I want to know and I want to be there for them and we can get through things together. So, so try to remember that it's a privilege to be able to be positive all the time. I know it's more nuanced than this and more complicated. And there's probably a lot of caveats and, and kind of exceptions and things like that. I just want people to remember that and try to not be a dig when I talk to you. <laughs> if that's possible. Is that possible? I don't know.
Right. God, I am a little bit of a mess, to be honest. I, again, like, because my life is so hard at the moment that I've just been getting really smashed <laughs> to cope. Uh, don't do this at home, but no judgment either for me, as in just take care of yourselves, okay? I need to do that, and I, I'm trying as well. And again, so yeah, the ACEs test shows that if you've had a difficult upbringing, it manifests in illnesses and, and disabilities, it could do, it doesn't always. And obviously there's a lot of people who are ill and disabled who haven't had that upbringing. But the fact that it affects you so much, yeah, shows that privilege around if your life is easier and you haven't had that stuff, like, you know, I'm happy for you. It's it's not something I would wish on anyone, but I wanna complain about shit. <laughs> and that's totally valid and legitimate. And uh, it makes, it's actually quite funny. Like I laugh a lot when I complain about stuff. It's funny. <laughs> I make poems about it. Like, it's cool. But, yeah. Do you see what I mean? I think you, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying. Um, yeah. Because what's also hard is if you're having a difficult time and people are shaming you for talking about it and then you can't talk about it and then you feel ashamed about it. <laughs> you're like, oh, this, this is even worse. <laughs> You know? yeah. mm. um, it's fair enough if people just want to check in on me to check it that I'm okay like I can confirm that I am okay um, and again like being able to talk about stuff allows me to be okay because I think the, the fact that you can see me talking about stuff shows that I'm okay in my view um, I'd be worried if I if I wasn't doing that basically so yeah I I have some spiritual beliefs that like stop me from acting on my passive suicidal ideation and that's a privilege like I'm lucky that that is the case and simultaneously it's still not very nice to feel these things and um also that privilege allows me to talk about it as well because I know that I'm not a risk um and so that's quite a situation to be in where oh I'm not a risk of that but at the same time I can make art about like goodness and joy and darkness and suffering um yeah and I think that kind of makes me feel like I have a responsibility to work on that and to share that and to make that a part of my art and my videos so yeah it's kind of a rant I feel like I feel quite annoyed about this <laughs> area just leave me alone <laughs> just fuck off <laughs> fuck off fuck off <laughs> <laughs> this stuff can also kind of show people's assumptions and their prejudice because sometimes what people frame and think I'm like I'm just saying things that I think are neutral or like facts or this is just how it is and then people like put their presumptions presumptions assumptions assumptions or presumptions about like oh I'm that's negative that's a thing that's sorry that's the thing that's negative where I could just be talking about my health or my disabilities. And, you know, I don't think those things are actually negative. It's just like how it is. So it shows, you know, and if I'm talking about being disabled or something like that, and someone's like, that's really negative. It's kind of ableist, <laughs> you know, cause it's like, yeah, it's obviously not that clear cut. And I'm just talking about my life. So, that's your filter. That's your, like, rose-tinted glasses, but not rosely tinted. And so that's another thing that I find difficult about it, is that it shows other people's prejudice and um, kind of assumptions about what you're saying. Like, it does obviously, like, I've done a lot of work on, like, positivity and negativity. Like, what are those things? They're quite, like, difficult things to, like, figure out. Yeah, so it kind of shows other people's opinions about what you're talking about and that can be quite shocking as well also it's so easily ha handled it's so easily handled like you can when someone says something that's difficult say or challenging or you know life experience or something like that all you really need to do is acknowledge it all you really need to do is like oh I'm sorry to hear that oh that sucks like do you need anything oh like do you want to talk about it more or do you want a distraction or do you want to do something else do you need space 
and that's kind of it and that's all people really need they might want to talk about stuff more they might not but it's really difficult when you talk about stuff that's challenging and then people are like <laughs> don't say negative <laughs> basically shut the fuck up and I don't give a fuck <laughs> yeah yeah that's a shame isn't it um yeah like really their first reaction in my view should be acknowledgement like something to be like oh acknowledge it oh. rather than like steam past and be like let's be positive duh, 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 duh. um but it doesn't take that much and then everyone's you know feeling better so i've done a lot of study and work around mental health obviously i've got extensive experience myself handling a fuck ton of mental health stuff and one of the things that makes it worse is when your culture and your society and your people make you feel weird or make you feel strange or make you feel unusual that compounds the mental health issues because you're taught to be like oh that's strange like I shouldn't be feeling like this and then your mental health gets worse whereas if you normalize uh, someone's mental health when they come to you with hurt or problems or challenges say and I don't mean normalize like romanticize and make it like you know minimize that not at all what I'm trying to say is that if you recognize and acknowledge someone where they're at and if you relate to them in any way sharing that if you're comfortable and if you want to do that if you do this normalization process for someone's mental health distress it actually reduces the distress so when I did mental health first aid we did all types of mental health crises training on how to support that and one of the many things that I learned and we're talking like standard anxiety to, to incredibly serious mental health situations and experiences and one of the things that came up time and time again there was a pattern across all of this response training and that was that active listening can really really help people so whatever the situation well Obviously, some situations you can't actively listen or it's too serious. You, you know, you have to maybe call the emergency services, something like that. But a lot of the time, as long as you can actively listen to someone, it often reduces their mental distress. And that's also why a lot of people can't keep things secret, that uh, difficult things that have happened to them, why they talk about it, why they, why they come out and disclose things and why stuff comes to light and you know comes out publicly and all these things one of the reasons is is because they need you know a lot of the time not all the time like I can't really make I can't really like speak for everyone and everything but a lot of the time they need people to recognize what's happened they need people to acknowledge it and to listen to them and so that's what that kind of allows and that's one of the reasons why I talk publicly about things okay we have a <laughs> big coat on we're just gonna deal with it oh um I like this coat I like having stuff on my head anyway I digress again um also I want to say I did have a really great time last night thank you Karen it was awesome I loved it um I just got too smashed because my life is really difficult at the moment <laughs> oh yes and I also wanted to add that this is one of the because it's one of the reasons how I manage things it's also true that, like, for example, like, a lot of autistic people get on with each other, for example. Not all the time, like, it's not like we're not a homogenous category. But research does show that we communicate very effectively together. And so, you know, there's a lot of links between me and other people whose lives are also difficult. Well, not everyone, obviously, but the point is, like, I don't necessarily have the support I need anyway, but also... The people around me also have their own stuff. I mean, that's normal anyway, right? Normal, you know, st standard. Generally, I think the population of the world is like, you know, struggling. But, and at the same time, yeah, it's like an assumption that like I can get what I need from my friendships necessarily because I, I need so much that like that's just not the case. And also like they don't, it's not their job to look after me. Simultaneously, like I get a lot from those friendships and one of the reasons why autistic friendships can be intense is because we do talk about a lot of the stuff and a lot of the shared pain as well as the shared awesomeness and that makes it more fun as well because you can laugh together and you can like 
you know, just get support from that. And again, if I wasn't explicit about the difficulties, I wouldn't be able to do that. I remember I was in this group, so content that I just very briefly mentioned, like a drug cult. <laughs> That's a story for another day, what, what was happening there and the work that we did. Yeah, we were kind of doing anti-oppressive stuff and bringing some public, some allegations to light and it was like really difficult to do. And unfortunately there was like an assumption in the group that we don't have to do any like, I mean, you know, they have the right to say that we don't have the capacity to give emotional support, but it was very emotionally intense. Yeah, they were saying that we, and don't get me wrong, like I, I really value this group a lot. But one of the things someone said is that we, we're going to get support from our from our networks. But for me, like, I don't have a family network. I don't have family support apart from one person, which I value and appreciate. Um, and a lot of autistic people or a lot of mentally unwell people and, and queer people and LGBT people don't have family support. Like, they may do, but there is a pattern there where a lot of us don't. And so you don't have that, but also, as I said, like my friends or my connections could also, they don't have the capacity necessarily to give me the support that I need. And you know, that's absolutely valid and important, but it's like an assumption that I can get the support I need outside. Like I, I can't really, I, and I don't. Um, and so I find it very difficult to do this work because I was just struggling so much. In fact, the content that I mentioned being bullied at work, I was being very seriously bullied at work as well. So. I had to leave the group because I just couldn't cope um but I rejoined it and yeah so I just think that's important to share as well it's like I think the way that one some of the many ways that I deal with things by making poetry and all these things is like my self-coping and performing these things and making them public is is how I deal with stuff so yeah I thought that hope that was interesting <laughs> hope that was interesting oh that looks a bit weird Boop. Boop, boop. If you recognise yourself in what I'm saying, like you don't have to feel bad. I'm just making like general social commentary. So it's quite likely that people will feel like either they resonate with what I'm saying or they'll resonate with the behaviours I'm talking about in, you know, in whatever way. So I don't want you to take it personally. It's not personal. It's actually like a cultural thing. Um, yeah, so don't feel bad. Also, like, I'm right. <laughs> so the reason why I do, like, the reason why I talk about negativity or negative things or dark things sometimes, you know, in appropriate spaces and, and places with checking in and content notes, blah, 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 is that it makes me happier much faster. So I return back to, like, the positivity or the positive me or the positive, like, energy that I seem to give out, um, like, people have told me that um and that's why that's how I've done it so I've actually like circumvented set shortcut anyway I've made like a little shortcut where I can like return to feeling more regulated and feeling better feeling more positive as everyone in, in the culture and the world wants me to be um and the, the way that I've done that is by talking about the negativity so and again research shows and, and backs this up as well that like the best way to become like happier or more positive is to like be real and be acknowledging of your own emotions and observe them and yeah so that actually gives you a faster route back to more emotional regulation more stability and and so ironically like I'm right <laughs> about this and like Forcing positivity or forcing people to pretend they're happy all the time does not work. It does not make them happy. Maybe you can take a leaf out of my book. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my accent then. My book. My book. So it's like, so it, it's illogical what people, when people are telling me to be more positive, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing that. Like, you know, stop stopping me from doing that, dude. So, but it's like, it frustrates me because they are, they don't seem to understand that. And so it's actually like, they're kind of messing up their own point because what I'm doing can help with that, with what they want, with what they're arguing for. Does that make sense? You know, to have a positive outlook or, yeah, like a positive vibe or a positive conversation or whatever. It's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm just like going around and it's actually faster and better. So, so there. No, 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 no
um, just making people aware of, of my needs and my experiences. And I hope that's helpful. Okay, bye. Bye again.